Welcome back, week five, Riverside Royals action. We are 0 and 3, and we absolutely suck. But we're working on getting better. And uh, there are a bunch of players I just need to get off of my board that I have yet to do at this point. Or, like, I'm not going to put more points into them. Do I really want Tim Turner, other than it's kind of funny because the, there was a show, Timmy Turner? He's slow, he can't cover, he's terrible. We got to do better than that. Jared Lopez is not particularly good, and he's super slow. I got to just get a bunch of these players off that I don't actually want so we can be better in the future. So anytime we have like the plus 280 there, and it can be any different number, it means we're gaining on those other teams. So if we just stay in it, we can get in the race on pretty much anybody that we're down on right now. We just have to get back into the race, dump points into them. So even though it seems we might be a long way away from some of these players, we are absolutely, and I, I've played a lot of NCAA 14 over the years, and especially you've seen it on the channel, a guy like Linwood Tapley, who is a plus eight gem, looks incredible. We're way behind, but we also gained 405. We just got to stay the course, stay in it, and eventually we can probably get into that final two or three and hopefully win out for his recruitment. But I also need to take some points off a couple of players. And I, I think I just have to make a sacrifice of somebody. Maybe it's Levert Abraham has insane man coverage, though. You usually, historically, I don't think in NCAA 14 without the recruiting mod, would see a split like this of 87 man, 72 zone, 90 press. Like, he's much better than the 67 overall that it says. And there was a comment that said, hey, focus a little bit less on the overall with this recruiting mod and focus more on the individual ratings. I think this is a perfect example of it. Levert Abraham has 87 speed and man and 90 press. Yeah, he can't shed blocks or tackle very well, but we don't need him to. Lock a guy down in coverage. I think we actually have to stay in there. I need to create some space here and get some points off a couple of different recruits so I can scout some others to know if they're going to be any good or not. But I think I did that in the last episode because I, I don't have nearly 5,000 points being spent on these players, yet I only have 90 points available right now. Like, I can take 10 off to scout two players, but... Oh, and I've already scouted. We need to just get some of these bad players off the board. And we certainly don't need two fullbacks. They both aren't great. I don't... I mean, I don't really need a fullback, period, right now. Yeah, these are the bad players. Willie Wood. Get these guys out of here. I mean, 70 might be about the cutoff of what I'm interested in actually getting to our school, but we just got to get a lot of these guys off the board. And I need offensive and defensive linemen. That's going to be a big focus in this episode at the end is I need to bring in better defensive linemen and Miles Amos is a good start. Plus six gem, 74 overall with 80 power moves, 82 block shed. His speed is absolutely horrendous, but the rest is good. Now, a good way to find gems in the past is we look to King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. That's not the way, but it's to look for players with really high squats as they'd typically be very strong and like typically gems. So we're gonna try to find some gem three stars all the way down the board with guys that put up tremendously high squats. It doesn't work all the time, but there are a lot of times when it can work as Lindell Henderson from Woodway, Texas has a squat significantly higher than any other outside linebacker. 740 is ridiculous. Now, he is a junior college transfer, so he's a bit older. Only a few more years of eligibility opposed to a guy with, you know, four or maybe even five with a red shirt, and we don't play him year one. Lindell Henderson could end up being a superstar, but we have to go on the road to face undefeated 3-0 Georgia Southern. They're a mid-80s overall team, which is kind of absurd for Georgia Southern, but I guess they've just recruited really well and they are just dominating right now, scoring the second most points in the country near 50 and allowing under 20 points per game. They've been one of the most effective teams, period. Now their matchups may not have been great, but this is a three game sample at this point. They seem to be significantly better than any other team in the MAC, and they have a number of 90 overall players you have to look out for. Number two pass offense, number 23 rush offense for Georgia Southern. We are out of the top 100 in every category, unless there was a category for being terrible. We'd be number one. Not like, not much to that joke, barely even a joke, but it's our team's a joke. So that's all I got for you. We are bad. We are trying to do something. 
to be better than bad. And I'll be honest, I'm ready to admit it at this point. It's not our year. It's not our year, probably. Probably, definitely. Certainly. We are awful. But Georgia Southern is not ready for what's about to hit them. The Riverside Royals do best. Not defending the kingdom, but going out and claiming new land. And that's what we're going to do today. Walk into Georgia and dominate. All right, the game plan for today. Run the damn football. Pound the rock. Shorten the game. Win the game. And we just can't move. And Jones is completely bottled up. He got caught in, I don't know, it felt like a conveyor belt. We were moving just in the same direction as slowly as possible, and we were stuck. And now it's third and 11, and now we really can't run the damn football. It's not really a run play that's gonna get you close to 11 yards on average. It's not great. Tight end is open though, and it's, I mean, our quarterback has a literal noodle for an arm. I'm hungry, I might I might eat it, honestly. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's an open-ish receiver who ends up slowing down because he's slow and terrible. But the pass is so underthrown, it's almost unbelievable that this could be a real college player. It looks like they grabbed a quarterback out of Pop Warner Pee Wee football and said, you know what? Go play. And he's, he's eight years old. And, you know, he's got a pretty good arm for an eight-year-old, but it doesn't belong in college football. That's what I'm trying to say. Here's first and 10. And uh, it's going to be a touchdown. Not a great start. That's the review. Oh, there's a little bit of space for Troy Jones. If we can just manage to shorten the game a ton and tie it up so that we can have the last possession of the first half, that's going to be how we win. Now, we got to stop calling pass plays and run the damn football. I cannot be more clear about this. This isn't the NFL. There's no incentive to tank. We are trying to win as many games as possible so that we can get some new recruits. That's the big goal. And we just can't live on third down. And the playbook only calls for pass plays. We cannot throw the ball. You want to see what happens when we throw the ball? We're under pressure. Broken sack. Sacked. Great job! That's a sick punt. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, look at that defense, though. Todd Mills brought down for a loss. It's Brett Johnson with the TFL. Probably the first time he's made a tackle this year. Congratulations, Brett, on the big accolade. Big achievement. As, uh, you know what? Maybe we're about to get a stop. It looks like they're going to really air it out today. The opposite of what I want to do. It's second and 11. Going five wide, and it's a check down, and we are stiff-armed into oblivion, and it's a first down for Georgia Southern. It's just trucked over. Big hit from Price. That's what I like to see. You know what? They're going to get 11 yards. It's fine. We can't do anything about it. But let them know that they can get those yards. They're going to pay the price. Literally. Big hit from Wesley Price on the back end. That was actually, I swear to God, unintentional pun. But it worked out perfectly. At first, obviously, I saw where it was leading. All right, I saw. I realized what I had done. Second and eight. I'd love a turnover. Love a lot of things, to be honest. But it's not going to happen. They just love to get 11-yard plays. There's another one. The only turnover we might be getting are Apple turnovers after the game. Because in the game, we're not going to come close. Oh, that could have been it. That could have been it. That could have been it. Up the middle and touchdown, Todd Mills. Not much we can do about that. Not a great start for us. Nine plays, 65 yards for Georgia Southern. Seven plays, eight yards for us. Read option. We actually got blockers. Going to take the first down. And, uh, I mean, again, I think the strategy can work out. We will need to stop at some point as we're down 14. But we can just score on this possession and then score with our next possession and make it the last drive of the first half. We're going to be in the game. Now, I'm doing coach suggestions 
and it keeps suggesting passes. And I go on autopilot, and I just forget that we don't have a quarterback or a receiver or an offensive line or anything. And I just choose the pass play. So I got to stop doing that. And we might be able to move the ball. Ah, it, there was potential there. And then we just read the hole like Trent Richardson. Totally missed it. I got, a, I got an idea. Is it possible for me to move Dan Sims out of the quarterback spot and get somebody a little bit faster in there? It looks like it's going to be. Wesley Price. Starting strong safety, I'm going to move in to play quarterback. He's got 87 speed, great agility and acceleration. He's not going to be able to call any audibles, I don't think, because he doesn't play quarterback. But what he can do is be fast. He can't really run the ball. This might be a bad idea. But we really have to be careful here. Don't call a pass play and run read option and hand the ball off. There we go. Troy Jones... We just can't find space with him. Like, at some point, if we get a first down, I want to see if Wesley Price is capable of throwing the ball at all. But it's not going to be right now. We need a block. Oh, we got one. Troy Jones gets us only one. Makes it fourth and six. We're going to go for it. Not going to punt in this spot. We're going to bring out read option. And I hope they play the running back. Feels like they have, like, 15 players on the field. How is that possible? But there's Wesley Price. He's got speed. You gotta get there, Wesley! That's six yards! Tell me he got the first! He had to have, and he did! Wesley Price. That's like the fastest guy on the team, by the way, and that is not incredibly fast. We're gonna see if he's capable of throwing the ball at all. They're blitzing. The running back was open. We might have something with Wesley Price. It's not a great arm, probably. But if we can just get lucky with an accurate pass, we might have something. And we've got speed. And there goes Price. Oh, we might have something with the dual threat two-way player. We are... Oh, no. Wesley Price is hurt. So Wallace is in a QB. That's not great. And he is shut down for a loss of two. Jamar Wallace. Now, I need to make my backup quarterback Dan Sims probably. They read read option. We're obviously going for it here. Wesley Price getting injured. Maybe he's just tired. Desmond Smith, man. Our best defensive player out for the year. Doesn't help, but I'm going to get Jamar Wallace out of here. It, it, or I can't because my controller's screwing up. I'm like, why is it doing that? All right, Wesley Price is back in. I don't know if my controller is going to be working right now. Very bizarre what's happening. But we got space for Wesley Price. He makes a move, breaks a tackle, and picks up the first down and more. Wesley Price, maybe future two-way star for the Riverside Royals. I could be in, although he is out again. It's Dan Sims who's back. Just check it down. Don't be a hero, Dan, from Dumont, New Jersey. I'm a New Jersey uh, kid. Grew up there for the first 18 years of my life. I do not know where Dumont, New Jersey is. Maybe for the best. There's just nothing there. It was a screen. <laughs> Wesley Price is back in. That didn't work. Sims is back in now. Wesley's just got to be super tired. We got to put him down for a nap. Third and seven. Safety's creeping up. We just threw an instant slant, hoping it would be open. It was not. As D. Lee makes the play. Price bruised ankle. Okay, well, we are forced to throw the ball here. Fourth and seven. We're trying to fit that in. It's just too much speed from Georgia Southern. Too much speed. Oh my, what What just happened? What did I just see? We're gonna make a nice tackle. There was like a speed burst going on that looked just inhuman. What even was that? Tell me I wasn't just seeing things. I Something looked like hyper speed. This was not what I remember seeing. I don't know. Am I am I losing it? That's entirely possible, I guess. I swear there was like a massive speed burst. Uh, and there goes Mills. Oh, and there he really goes. He's gone. We've got no shot. 
That's a touchdown, 21-0, Georgia Southern. Todd Mills again. All right, Wesley Price is back in. We're down 21. The strategy here is, I don't know, basically over. Like, this is going to be the final drive of the first half, hopefully. Wow. But what chance do we have at this point? Not much. Oh, that was not what I meant to... I, I wanted X. <laughs> And because I'm on the PlayStation controller as opposed to the uh, Xbox controller I usually use, uh, X is a different button. So that was a little bit confusing for me for a second. But not like it would have worked anyway, as we're throwing with a safety. And that's intercepted. Oh, it's a screen. Wesley Price! Uh, kind of helped with the tackle. Is that a touchdown? It could be. Dwayne Wade ends up saving the touchdown. For what reason, Dwayne? Like, who cares? Our returner, by the way, Rivera, a.k.a. Barry Allen, he's a flash. Slowest player I've ever seen. Wesley Price with the nice play, though. Uh, Rivera's hurt. It, he, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, there's a speed burst. Georgia Southern going to lose a lot of yards on that. Our defense is starting to play. I'm telling you, there are these crazy speed bursts on some of these motions, and I don't know, Is maybe this is how Georgia Southern has an 86 overall team. They've made a deal with the devil. They have supernatural ability, and that's what's happening. Of course, now that I mention it, Graham motions over, you know, slow as can be. Ends up actually catching the football, breaking a tackle, stumbling his way to the goal line. They just converted a third and 21 very easily. I don't know where they're going with the ball. Brian in motion. It's actually going to be a little jet sweep touchdown. Georgia Southern showing us how it's done. Bryce back in at quarterback. We have one play with him, and it is run. And hopefully he doesn't die. I mean, if we can throw it down the field long enough, we might have something here. And we do have something. Our third interception of the game. 28-0 Georgia Southern. We'll head to the second half with, uh, I don't know. I, I, there's no positive outlook on anything that's happened. You know, I'll tell you, I cannot wait for a few years as Wesley Price makes another nice tackle. He's definitely good, he's just not a quarterback. But I can't wait to reschedule some of these games in a few years, you know, after we're good. And when we have the recruits and we've developed them, you better hope I don't have the opportunity to schedule a game against Georgia Southern because it's not going to be pretty. I will decimate them. And you know what? I want a rematch with Colorado State. I know that wasn't this season, but that was one of our big rivals when we were in the Mountain West in the original series. Ajon Vivens, the running back, uh, completely frustrated me to no end. And I'd like the opportunity to beat up on Colorado State at some point. However... Currently in this season, we are down on our luck, to say the least, and dog shit to say the most. That's wide open over the middle. Turn around, Wesley. Not that it matters. Touchdown, Southern. It is 35-0. We're losing to a quarterback, and my controller keeps disconnecting. We're losing to a quarterback named Rick Hall. That's nobody's actual name. That's like... That's like a quarterback of like a vet NFL QB that they write in a movie. Oh, this is longtime quarterback Rick Hall. I've never seen anyone with that name. It's not a quarterback name in real life. And here we are getting just, I'm going to scream. What's more disconnected, my defense or my controller? Tough question. Wesley Price back in at quarterback. We're gonna look to run because of course we are. And he's gonna dive because he can't slide. And he coughs up the football because he's not a quarterback. Of course he can't slide. That's right. Well, it was a nice play before that. And McGrew throws a massive stiff arm. This is like if a college team played an actual middle school team. Just getting thrown around. like It's like a toddler just being thrown across the room. 
I will say that's an interesting frame of reference, not from personal experience. I want to be clear on that. Oh, it's a touchdown. This McGrew guy is like prime Jerome Bettis. He is running over people. You can't tackle this guy. Like, we've played with other teams ish, right? I mean, we still get beat pretty massively, but I mean, Georgia Southern is a juggernaut. We cannot even come close to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. Offense has been a problem. We've been weird on offense, but defensively, we cannot make a stop. It's incredible how bad we are. Run, Wesley. Ooh, nice broken tackle. I'd love a block on the outside. That'd be sweet. Dan Sims back in at quarterback. He's not looked like a QB today. I, I, I don't know. We're going to try to fit that in. I, with a good quarterback, maybe. But we just we can't do anything. I want to be able to throw to some of these guys, but it's just it just simply is not possible. And down 42, I'll tell you, the keep it on the ground method it can only take you so far. We had to have been able to score points early to actually keep that as a viable strategy but it's been a uh, difficult so far and i mean we we move the ball more effectively on the ground obviously but i don't know it's just we're gonna keep taking time off the clock the game's over it's it's another frustrating one i mean sims and price just keep going back and forth being quarterback now <sighs> nice drop I don't really know what to do about it. Price just runs for 10 yards, gets tired, gets subbed out. Dan Sims comes in the game, doesn't complete a pass for one reason or another, and then Price comes back in and we try to run for it. But they blitz there, couldn't really get out. But these scrambles have been effective. Looks like they're gonna work a spy on the field. Uh, we're gonna get sacked for sure. Actually, Price breaks the tackle. He's still going. He's so tired. He gets four. He's going to be subbed out. Dan Sims is going to come on as we try to convert a fourth and six. And we'll see if we're capable of doing that. I have a theory on how this goes. We'll see if I'm right. Running back wide open. I am right as always. I never doubted it. First down, Riverside. We're right back in it. A third and eight. Who wants to get open? Nobody, I guess. Get Wesley Price back in, please. Nope, it's more Dan Sims. I hate this guy. Fourth and eight. Check down to Jones. <laughs> eh, I don't know, dude. I was hoping for a broken tackle or something. Our options are limited. Oh, that's going to be a touchdown. I mean, we have we simply no answer. Brewster might be able to save this. There is a flag. It might be coming back. Okay, clipping. Rare call nowadays. I will go ahead and accept that. Now, I don't know how accepting that penalty gives them first and five. How do they get a shorter first down to convert? Not really sure on that one. But we got to deal with it. Going long. Caught by Bryant. We won't be catching him. Touchdown, Southern. 70 yards for Troy Bryant. After a 10-yard run, Wesley Price is just, I think, six yards away from a 100-yard day rushing, and that's going to be it. Wesley Price is going to go way over 12 rushes for 106 yards. There is something there with that level of speed, but I don't really know how to make it more consistent. Having a two-way player is obviously not the way to do it. I don't think. I think the way to do it would be with a receiver that doesn't play. But the problem is, any one of our fast receivers plays. Because when we don't really have much speed at all, as Sims has plenty of space, I wish this was Wesley Price. We'd have a ton of room to scramble. Could have picked up probably 25. Second and eight. Oh, it's a dart from Sims caught by Clarence Johnson. Every time Clarence catches a football, an angel gets its wings. And... A lot of angels without wings out there were sacked again. Ricky Arnold. Oh, Antoine Davis scoops it up off the ground. Breaks a tackle and gets 13. That's our best receiver, and we can almost never get him the ball. We need a quarterback so badly. 
Oh, what a ball from Sims. Steven Jones gets nine. It's going to be first and goal. This is a great drive. And what's crazy enough about it is that we've got down the field by throwing the ball a lot and successfully. They've been short throws mostly, but they've been successful. Might be able to hit Clarence Johnson here for a touchdown. Not going to happen. On the run. That was not directed at 37, by the way. Second and goal. Up the middle for Jones. He falls ahead. It's going to be third and goal from maybe the one and a half yard line. Maybe the two. Something in that range. It's going to be right on that two. Speed option. Touchdown. Let's go. Sims walks in. We are on the board. Big time touchdown for the Royals. I know what you're thinking. Garbage time? I disagree. Never a bad time for a score. As the extra point is drilled. Texas upsets number three, Tennessee. Hook em horns, baby. Big win for the Longhorns. The real UT with the win. Now, I have not seen Wesley Price on the field in a hot minute. I don't know if he's hurt or what. But uh, either way, the game is over. Final snap goes to Rick Hall. He breaks a tackle. He's looking for space and is tackled from behind. Picks up 25 yards, and that should be it. 49-7 is your final as we fall to 0-4. You know what? It's, it wasn't a great performance from us. I'll, I'll say that. But we showed some flashes. We got a touchdown on our final possession. And I'll say this. If you just take the result of the final five minutes of the game, we would have beat Georgia Southern 7-0. So it's just, it's all about how you think about it. Dan Sims goes 11 for 22, 75 yards and two picks. Wesley Price goes one for six for five yards and a pick. But rushing, oh boy, 12 for 106, 8.8 .8 per attempt. Dan Sims didn't do much. Had a long of 17 and had 17 yards total. Sacks, of course, count as rushing yards in college. Troy Jones didn't do a whole lot. It was really tough to get him going. And obviously the receivers didn't do a whole lot. Defensively, Wesley Price balled out. He is clearly our best player on defense right now and probably the whole team. But uh, yeah, not our best performance. But given how well we've played this year, which is not at all, uh, it's tough to pinpoint our best performance. Our best performance might be losing by 35. We do have a recruit ready to visit, though, and we're in a recruiting battle with a couple of schools there for a couple different recruits. We do have more points here for scholarships and uh, throwing these on players. Alex Ture from Sheldon, Iowa is a very interesting player. He's a plus 14 gem with great speed and acceleration, great tackling. He is like a real classic, like strong safety type probably is where I'd move him. Could play free safety as well. But Wesley Price has been great. Toure would be a great combo with him. Ikone, or in Inyoke, Inoke, however you say it. We're going after him. Not much of a catcher, but great speed and the ability to get open as well is going to be extremely valuable. From the six foot four, 230 pound high school senior from Hawaii. Let's check out some of the players we added to our boards, though. Let's see. Not scouted, 12. And it, honestly, like, minus 2530, if we were to put points in, because we're minus 380 after putting in no points, if we put points in, we might be able to, like, make a run on a player like that, like JJ Gag as well. Let's see how good some of these players are. We don't have a ton of points, but we can reallocate where we put those. Goodbye, Marcus. Thanks for playing. Goodbye, Oscar. Later. Oh my god, dude. These guys absolutely suck. This is the first one that's not absolutely terrible. But I'm not thrilled. There's a plus 11 gem for Clayton Bartlett. Another Juco player. We need, like, less Juco guys. And more, you know, players we can develop over time. Like Miles Horst. Linebacker from Louisiana. Again, I think we're still in on a player like that. And we're gaining points anyway without throwing anything down on him. He's got great finesse moves at 84, good tackling, great speed. He could be an outside rush linebacker, to be honest. Matt Chung from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania is a plus eight gem. Good block shedding, decent overall athlete. JJ Gag is a plus 18 overall gem at center. 
is a junior college player, so he's a bit older. So it's not as cool, but still very good. Lindell Henderson is a plus 22 gem, up to an 87. 94 tackle and acceleration, 82 speed, 81 pursuit. Wish he was a better athlete, but that is a big time steal. And then Cameron Hinton. Again, these are the high uh, squat players. Not the fastest, but good power moves, hit power tackle. He's a plus 13 gem, but I'm not sure he's quite as good. But okay. Big time week for discovering things. Obviously a lot of busts in there. But we also found some really great players. And we're losing on Torrey Amaro. Who's good, but we have Daniel Belcher. I think I just got to take my points off Morrow and focus elsewhere. We really just need more points right now. We don't have them. It's a big problem. We need to get a couple of guys to recruit to free up some space. So we're just going to stay on the players that we're, we're going after these recruits and, um, you know, see if we can't, you know, get some big additions and then go after some other bigger additions, maybe. All right, we're going to add in a double header. 79 overall, Middle Tennessee State. Shorten the quarter length from eight minutes down to seven, because I'm telling you, it's been brutal in year one. And uh, we're going to see if our strategy can work against Middle Tennessee State. Again, we're going to try to keep the ball on the ground. They've only played two games this year. So maybe we can catch them by surprise. I don't know. This might be my first time ever playing the Blue Raiders in uh, NCAA 14. Certainly got to be my first time going to Middle Tennessee State. They're not amazing. They're definitely way better than we are. But that doesn't mean we can't come in and upset them at home. Not exactly a packed house. All right, here we go. Nope. Dude, can this work, please? What's happening? My offense doesn't work. My defense doesn't work. My controller... Uh, wants to follow suit. It's incredibly frustrating. I don't know why it's all of a sudden not working. It's, it's something else. But uh, we'll see if we can get it together for one game. At least. And beat Middle Tennessee State. It'd be a big upset because any win versus anybody would be an upset for us. But uh, we'll see what we can do. This is the worst team we've played probably. We have as good a chance to win as we've ever had. Well, maybe not ever, but post-death penalty, this is our best chance to win. We Someone's got to tackle Davis. Okay, third and 11. Set the tone. Like, a three and out to start the game would be massive for us. It's not going to happen. Zach Griffin for 21 yards on the corner route. Nobody even close to him, really. That was the old vet, Dwayne Wade, just watching the ball sail over his head. What a guy. That was, that was a good start for us. We just didn't have a good finish. There's another nice play. Davis is sacked. It is Brett Johnson, who had a nice play in the beginning of the last game. If he could just play throughout the entire game the way he starts, we'd be the number one ranked team in the country. Yeah, maybe not, but... We'd be better than we are now. Second and 11. Get out there. Play in the pitch and look at that tackle. The price is wrong for Brandon Davis. He loses a yard, maybe gains half a yard. It's third and 10. Rivera on the field. He's our usual return man. Got banged up in the last game. Here's third down. I mean, that, that offensive lineman. That offensive lineman is 30 yards down the field. And they're going to call pass interference on it. I'll accept it. How about illegal man downfield? They have an offensive lineman. No joke. 40 yards down the field when that ball was thrown. We got very lucky with a call. I'm like, I knew they were not going to call that. But we got pass interference, so we'll take it. Third and 20. And we'll see if we can stop whatever they're going to do. And we do. They get 15 yards back, but it's going to be fourth and five. You know what it upsets me about this controller? is it's not really disconnecting if I can use it literally the second after it disconnects. Why is it disconnecting for a millisecond? It's it's extremely frustrating. We're going to let this go with Rivera. And it bounces into the end zone. We'll get the touchback. And we are in a great spot to win this game already. 
Just gotta keep the ball on the ground. I don't know if we're gonna use Wesley Sims very much, just because his impact on defense is a lot, and we can't really get that with the two-way aspect. It's great flag to start after a positive play. Flipping. There it is. First and 16 will not stop me from running the ball. Find space, Troy. And we get seven back. It will be second and nine. It's a good run. Way to bounce off a would-be tackler there. Or a blocker in some cases. That happens a lot. Second and nine. Going to read option. And we're going to read it. And the option goes to the running back, Troy Jones. He gets four. It's got to be four down territory. It has to be. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be. It sure, it probably isn't, actually. We're gonna go read option. We gotta watch out for that slot corner. I need this to probably go to Troy Jones, but they read it, and the slot corner comes up and makes the tackle. Uh, they, they, what are you gonna do? All right, we'll punt the football. Uh, they read read option. I don't know what we can do about that. They're just awesome. Look at that big time punt. We're going to pin him all the way back to the 45. This is why I don't know if I like punting with this current team. And I'm not even going after a punter in recruiting right now. That's probably a change I have to make. Is what are, like, wh what's best case scenario? We pin them on our 45 like we just did? If you go for it, at least maybe you can keep the drive alive. Punting just doesn't make sense with this current team. I know we set up the other team for, for points. Touchdown, Middle Tennessee State. I don't even... I don't know. It's like we were right next to him. Went for the hit stick. I thought he was going to pitch it at some point. And we, we just narrowly missed him each time. That was a really tough block. Look at Wesley Price here, 24 coming up. Kind of just runs into the, the ass of 66. We also got a cut block at the same time. And we were right there. I mean, 20 is right there and just goes through him almost. That's a crazy whiff. Second one, we're gonna try a screen. It's pretty open and we got blockers and they actually block. Big block from 73. There goes Troy Jones, stiff arming for more. It's a 49 yard play. Maybe the longest in the return of the series. Troy Jones. Got blockers out there on the screen, and they were just amazing. And then Troy Jones with enough speed to outrun some of the defenders, and then even stiff, stiff arm and get an extra 10, maybe? That's a big-time play. And we have not had many big-time plays. I see square. I want to do something with it. That's a unique throwaway. That's what we'll call that. Screen to Antoine Davis could be exceptional here. It's not going to be. And I have no other throwaway options. <laughs> That's how you turn a 49-yard play into third and 22 and likely not going to score at all. That was a great tutorial if you guys were looking on how to do that. That's how. How, how have we squandered this this much? Because I tried to pass, I guess. It was, a, it was supposed to be a screen. And they have, they have a spy... I need you to block. I need you to engage with this guy. <laughs> Go and hit him! We will punt. It's... I don't know how, like, our long distance on a punt is about 20 yards. And then I shoot the ball all the way up in the air. And it, it goes even farther somehow. How is that possible? I don't know. I can't, I can't believe it's 7-0 right now. Based on how this game has gone. It absolutely feels like we should be, maybe not winning, but at least tied. At least. That's going to be a big play. Hood, we need you to do something. Awful angle for Murphy. It's, he wasn't even going for the ball carrier. He was going to get blocked. 14-0 Red Raiders. That's not this team. Blue Raiders. And... Yeah, I mean, just frustrating. Very frustrating first quarter. Third and three. Read option. Jones broken tackle first down. Don't fight. Just take the forward progress. Move the chains. Third and one. This might be a give to the running back Holmes no matter what. It, it probably should have been. 
it probably should have been. They keep bringing up these uh, DBs who are managing to tackle our quarterback one-on-one, -on -one, which obviously they are, which is extremely frustrating. And they're, they're, they're bringing him back to that same spot. I got to get him out of that spot and maybe just scramble or check down or something. And we're going we're gonna to be sacked. Oh, my God. When they take away read option, I don't have a play that works. Just don't have one. First and goal for Middle Tennessee State. Throwing right at Wilkerson and completing it anyway. Zach Griffin for six. Well, yards, not six points. As Davis has yet to throw an incomplete pass. I'd love for that to change at some point. Maybe it'll be now. We just jumped off sides and we played the running back. So the quarterback walks into the end zone. Flag is off sides. It was a free play anyway. And it, it is a touchdown. Like, we're down 21 nothing right now. I know it sounds insane. I feel like this is a game that was winnable. And we've definitely squandered our opportunities. And I think I, I got to get into a playbook that is more run heavy. Because you see every play when it starts out. Or I just got to call my own plays. Is an, is an easier solution maybe. But every play is just pass, pass, pass. And that's not our offense. So on on fourth down, when I come out and read option, and then I can't audible to anything that's not read option unless it's a pass play, and I know they're going to take away read option, we're screwing ourselves out of moving the chains. Because we can convert on third and one and fourth and one. It just can't be read option every time. I'm going to lose it with this. Snap the ball, please. Jones broken tackle. Like, you can't rely on that happening every play. But the quarterback's not doing that. We're stepping up. Just go, Sims. Don't fumble, please. That's a first down. We have 46 seconds, three timeouts. We're going to call our first one here, I think. Yeah, let's do it. Now, the clock does stop briefly for first downs, but then it starts going again. So you don't just have infinite time. You got to be a little quick about it. As Antoine Davis catches the ball and breaks a tackle. So we can go hurry up now. The clock's not going to be moving. We don't have to burn a timeout until we pretty much get set. And then that clock's going to move again. But right now it's stopped. We have time. We have time. And there it goes. We're going to roll out. We're going to run with Dan Sims. We have space. Sims diving. And he gets 18. I figured we could dive and take a chance there because if he fumbles, he's likely fumbling out of bounds. Ends up holding on to the football, but gets real close to scoring a touchdown. In fact, gets down to the one. And now we can go read option and hopefully punch this thing into the end zone. Read option. Sims, broken tackle, and a touchdown. Dan Sims closes out the first half in style. Back-to-back -back big runs, one for big yardage, one for big points. We are on the board. And do we consider going for two here? It's a decent amount of distance to cover. But I don't think they're prepared to defend read option here. Uh, I swear I held down X. So I don't know why the uh, quarterback kept that. But okay. We're going to be down 21-6. Can't guarantee that we would have hit the extra point. I know that seems insane, but our kicker is absolutely terrible. We've missed them before. And uh, short field goals are not a thing we can do. So I figured take the chance. We're down already. Uh, didn't end up working out. I'd do it again. We do get the football to start the second half, though. Not entirely out of this one yet. All right, second and six. 12 seconds to go. Griffin comes in motion. This could be the last play of the first half. Griffin with a ton of motion. Is it a screen? What's happening? I mean, they do end up hitting him. They might be able to try a long field goal. I don't think they're going to be able to get it, though. They're actually going to go hurry up. Which is strange. They do have a timeout left. They can go, like, quick slant. Timeout. And then kick a field goal. Oh, no. The clock's ticking. He didn't get out of bounds. Okay. This should be the last play. Got to make a tackle. And we do. It's Steve Smith. A lot of those in the NFL. One played for the Giants. From about 2007 to maybe 2012 or so. He had a 1,000 yards receiving. He was a beast out of USC. But here we go. Second half. I'm not even going to talk about the other one. 
Uh, everyone knows the other one. We had some blocks here. Rivera down the sideline. Not a lot of speed, but a big return for Steve Rivera. He's actually had a nice day. Get Dan Sims on the move. Please don't get tackled from behind. He did, and he fumbled the ball. Get out of bounds. Oh, my God. If we didn't have 50 speed with Dan Sims, it's a little bit more than 50. That would have been huge. That would have been huge. We just could not get away from that defensive end. Sims stays in the game. A quick check down here is going to be the move. It's the big fullback, Ashley. Tyler Ashley needs to play more. This guy is a beast. He gets maybe, like, on average, half a catch a game. Or half a run. Ha half a touch. Yeah. But, um... He always seems to make him count. Trying that screen that worked so well. Not as great this time. Dan Sims, 9 of 10, by the way, for 97 yards. We're just throwing really short passes that I feel like he can handle. Holmes, get it. Let's go! Anthony Holmes for 11. We're driving. We are a touchdown away from making this, like, actually legitimately interesting. And I'm going to go for two. And hopefully get it this time. I don't love five wide here, but we're looking to check down pretty quickly. And that's exactly what we're able to do. Steven Jones gets us about nine and a half. Going to be second in inches. They call it ten, but it's obviously not because it's not first and ten. It's second in inches. This is a great halfback dive call. It's just like an instant handoff out of the gun. Here we go. Ooh. They defended that incredibly well. All right. Read option. It's, oh my god, Dan Sims is an absolute animal. We don't end up getting the first down. I again wanted to hand it off to the running back. That time I think I was just like deer in headlights and didn't actually do it. But the other time I definitely did it and he just didn't hand it off. Davis is going to come in motion. It's fourth and one. We need to convert here. Holmes up the middle. We need a block. Holmes gets it. That was way too close. I was about to call that awful uh, mid-screen play that I love so much. And thankfully, I didn't do it. So we could lose four on read option. They're just taking out read option. They're making me run other plays, and I don't like that. We were effective throwing the ball. That just might have to be the way forward, because they're taking away read option, which is the only thing I feel comfortable running. Gordon, I, I need more. I need more from that. Oh, it's disgusting. What possibly gets open here? I'm trying to think about it. Don't don't have an answer. Yeah, how about that? How about Smith diving and stopped? But it's a 19-yard pickup by John Smith. Yeah, I don't know either. He snuck onto the field and he's making a play. Great route. And it's first and goal now from about the two. We're gonna try to overpower them. I don't think that's a great strategy. We do get one. How about hurry up? Hurry up. Fullback dive. Let's get Tyler Ashley some points. Fullback dive is... I mean, he's unstoppable. Tyler Ashley with the touchdown. We got to get this guy the football more. He just, he just always gets ahead. Point after attempt. I think we go... And Dan Smith is tired. That's not great. I think we go something with a drag or multiple little mesh concept and hit it over the middle. Tyler Ashley is actually going to be one of the full or one of the tight ends. And he's like the most open, but Sims actually has a chance and gets rocked at the goal line and doesn't get in. And he's hurt. How do we not score on that? I know he's tired. I know he's slow. We had Ashley here. No, we didn't. They would have taken it away. I thought we had. I thought I missed a play. Rolling out was actually the right call. But then how in the world does this DB come down and make this play? This is an unbelievable play to stop the two-point conversion. Absolutely insane. So now it's a two-possession game, which sucks but at least we know where we stand we would have had to go for two anyway because we went for two the first time felt good at the time obviously uh hindsight's 2020 it was not the right call based on results 
But we're still very much in this game. We got back in it. I think we scored 12 unanswered, which isn't great. But it's something. We just gotta make a couple plays on defense. Get the football back. Make it a game. Oh, that's a great play. Lee Wilkinson loses five. It's Brett Johnson. I called him out, and he's delivering. You know, as a defensive lineman, you're not going to make a play every drive or every other drive even. But if you can make a couple plays a game that help us win, that's, that's a big-time help. This can't be a completion. Let's go. Not a completion. Big-time defense. And we're going to get the football back. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to say anything too early, but we, we're actually in a game. That's a fact. We are in a game. Jones on the punt. Rivera back to return. And he takes a shot. But you know what? Not a bad return. Oh, and Sims has an abdominal strain. He is out for the week. He's had such an awesome game. And now he cannot be our quarterback anymore. That sucks. Our other options. Jamar Wallace, Justin Brown. I mean, they both can't throw anyway, I don't believe. No, they really can't. They really can't. I mean, Jamar Wallace has no arm. Justin Brown is comparable to Dan Sims, but is way slower. I think the move now is throwing in a speedster. Do we get Kirby out there? I think we do. Or Justin Watson, a running back? What's your speed, Justin? 86? That's the new move. Justin Watson's our guy. Wallace is so slow, but has so much room. There goes Jamar Wallace. <laughs> uh, and he's shushing the crowd. 15-yard pickup. It looked like he was moving in slow motion. Unbelievable. All right, we now pretty much have no ability to throw, but we're going to be more dynamic running the football. There goes Jones. We got blocks. Jones crosses face of the safety and picks up 19. Look at that. Great block from 71. Juke back across. That's a huge pickup. It's a huge pickup. Now, remember, I'm calling a pass play here. We really can't pass. It's throw to the drag or scramble. Oh, my God. We really can't pass. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing on first down. Up the middle. That's a nice enough move. They pretty much had read option taken care of if we were to run that play with the slot corner coming up. The linebacker was unblocked. We cannot call an audible here. It's going to be a scramble. We're going to try to follow Holmes, I think. And there we go. Watson up the middle. Get a block and get into the end zone. Justin Watson with the 11-yard touchdown scramble. Pretty much a designed run on that. The motion kind of took the uh, the linebacker away, and then the running back came back to make the block. Great stuff. I see number 23 with Riverside. I think Phil Triplett. As we probably should go for two here, because it's a field goal game anyway, but we do end up hitting it. Um, but he, it is not Phil Triplett anymore. He does not play for Riverside, not for the last 20 years, because that's about how far we are into the future. As Miami looking to get upset by unranked NC State. But we are down just by two points... A field goal would give us the lead, which we can't kick, so it's not really that relevant. We literally will not be able to make pretty much any field goal. Wow, that's a big difference. Negative one yards in the second half, the Middle Tennessee State. They've only had the one possession, though. We're very much in this game. If we can hold them to a field goal, that's when things get interesting. That's when things would get really interesting as down goes Davis. He's sacked by Chris Hood. Oh my goodness, we are starting to actually play well. This is unbelievable. We just got to stay strong. We need a stop. A lot of time left in this game. But a stop would be big. There's a throw to the flat. We were all over it. We just couldn't make the tackle. And that's nine yards. We really couldn't afford to give up when we were all over it. Third down and six. This is a huge play. They're going five wide. Trips right. Gun empty. We need to make a play. Throw over the middle. Nice tackle by Smith. It's going to be fourth and two. And Middle Tennessee State will punt. <laughs> now we have to make plays without our quarterback, Dan Sims. We were just able to do it last drive. 
Will we be able to do it again? That's what is going to be interesting to find out. Watson is so small. But that's our quarterback now. But we cannot throw it. But we can break tackles and get a weird three yards. And he actually looks hurt. He actually looks hurt. Jamar Wallace checks back into the game. So we get the ability to audible at least. But that's the end of the third quarter. We need speed back on the field. Jamar Wallace cannot be the guy. He just can't be. But he's going to have to be. Running back wide open. Perfect timing. Jones out. And gets nine. All right, we're approaching midfield. At least Wallace can actually throw the football. It's a sixth catch for Jones. 78 yards receiving. He can't really throw the ball, by the way. I just mean in, like, relation to a running back playing the position. That... Could have been bad. Second and 10. Don't really love our choices here. I need Wallace to be faster. And there goes Jamar Wallace again. White Lightning. Vanilla Vic. Jamar Wallace is the best running quarterback I've ever laid eyes upon. He is so slow, but he's just managing to get the job done. He's sneaky fast. They're not ready for it. Unreal. All right, read option. We got blocks. There goes Wallace. You just can't fumble. That's going to be the big thing here. Can't fumble. Read option. Wallace jukes him out of his shoes. There goes Jamar Wallace. 13-yard pickup. Oh, my goodness. He is a machine right now. What the fuck? Broken vertebrae for Watson? He broke his back? Oh, my God. He came in to be our answer at quarterback. And now we've maybe not only ended his season, but maybe his entire career. Oh my God. Hold on a second here. Steve Rivera. That, he's a six foot four corner. He's got 87 speed. Oh my goodness. He, a, he might be our quarterback. I talked so much trash about him. He's had a good day returning the football. Uh, we might be able to give him uh, more responsibilities as we just didn't do anything right there. Anthony Holmes swallowed up. Can Rivera throw a screen? He can. Oh, look at the fight from Troy Jones. It'll be third and four. Rivera could be our solution here. He could be the guy. He looks slow returning because he, he, he is a little bit, but 87 speed's not that bad. We can't audible here. It's got to be a scramble. Or a quick throw. It's intercepted. That's devastating. It's a devastating play. Oh, man. I just... I was so sure he was going to play the curl. I had already decided to throw to the flat. I know. I know. I know. I just didn't think that curl would be wide open. I had, I had decided to throw it instantly. That's a huge mistake. We're not in field goal range because we there is no field goal range, but we were driving, we were figuring it out, and my downside there, my downfall, was calling a pass play without the ability to audible. We were forced into it. Like, we just got to get rid of it as soon as possible. We have a safety or a corner playing quarterback. He can't throw. We'll make the throw as easy as possible. And uh, it obviously did not work. You need to make that tackle. There's no way that can be a first. Lee Wilkinson fights for seven. It's third and one. We're going to send everybody. We're going to pick a blitz. And we need to close quickly. I think it's a run. They've got a jumbo setup here. And it is a run. And we did not defend it well enough. Still in the game, but we need to stop. That's a great stop. Middle Tennessee State loses a couple. Chris Hood with the TFL. Some type of option run there. Looked like some type of wildcat read option. Second and 13. Okay. Let's make a play. Make a play. And we did. Brandon Davis sacked. Look who it is. Chris Hood again. Second sack. Third TFL of the game. Talk about a breakout. Uh, now, I know the quarterback keeps running into these, but he does, though. 
We know it's a pass. Do not let them convert. Third and 15. Over the middle. And it's completed to Zach Griffin. I thought we read it. I felt like we read it. I, th I thought I was right there. Just took it. Just took the wrong route. That's letting these big TFLs go to waste. When we let that happen. And then we let that happen. They could do that all game if they wanted to. They haven't, thankfully. That's why we're in it. Hold them to a field goal here and we have a chance. That's what it's going to be. That's pretty much our best case scenario. Wilkerson in the gap. Big hit! As Lee Wilkinson is shut down by Wilkinson. <laughs> Any relation? I don't know. It's third and eight. They've converted 50% of their third downs. And we're going to need to stop them from converting this one. Tight end comes in motion. We're not jumping. We're staying disciplined. And they're going to let this go all the way down. Not calling a timeout here. We're going to need it if they get first and goal. So we need to stop here. Desperately. We're pushing up. We're pressing. Throw to the flat. Wilkerson shuts down Zach Griffin. And yes, I, I'm aware one is Wilkerson's one Wilkinson. <laughs> that was the joke. Or... I misread it. It's up for you to decide. We're going to let the clock tick down here. No, we're not. We're not. We're going to call a timeout. I think the timeout is less valuable with the clock stopping on first downs than the 30 seconds would be. Middle Tennessee State will try a field goal. And, I mean, we're going to need a touchdown either way. Kick is good, and I say either way because we, we just will not be able to kick a field goal as NC State has upset number three ranked Miami. We are down by five, two and a half minutes to play, two timeouts, and our quarterback, Rivera, has fumbled the kick. Oh my God. How am I going to trust him to play quarterback? I don't know. I don't know. Two and a half minutes. And a dream. There goes Rivera. He gets nine. That's okay. That's a decent play. Read option. Two minutes. Wallace is back on the field. He's. I know he's already become a fan favorite. I already know. And maybe for good reason. Look at Jamar Wallace go. He is the heart and soul of this team. And maybe Jamar is not his birth name, but it was a name he earned. There's Wallace with the check down to Holmes. We're going to actually take the yardage instead of getting out of bounds. It's eight yards for Anthony Holmes. They want to give us a profile on Jamar Wallace. Now is not the time. It's second and two. A minute and 35 to play. We have to know where we're going with the football. It's a check down to Holmes. He makes a man miss. First down, Jamar Holmes. That clock's going to continue to tick. Triple option scares me. We might try a screen across. We'll see. Troy Jones will also be an option, and it's an option we're going to go to. He's just open. He makes a man miss, steps out of bounds. Clock stops at a minute and 21. Second and six. Rolling out with Rivera. Throwing on the run. And incomplete. How did he not get a foot down? Yeah, review this. This is a game-changing play if he, if he managed to keep a foot in. On the run from Rivera, tell me he got a foot down. That left foot is dangerously close. Tell me there was some grass in between the sideline. Reversed! That's a big first down. Oh my goodness, that could be the difference between winning and losing this game. First down is absolutely massive in that spot. Rivera back out onto the field. He throws it to Jones, who breaks a tackle! Troy Jones, that's huge. We're over 350 offensive yards today. Just say total yards, not sound like a freak. Second and three. Troy Jones gets a block and the first down. Clock stops momentarily at 55 seconds. What do we do here? We have a quarterback that can't necessarily throw. It's a difficult spot to be in. And a throwaway is actually okay there. We'll try a counter run see if this works it did not we're gonna have to call a timeout get our bearings it's third and 13 and we've called it a play instantly by accident Rivera on the field we need a big time scramble here 
There goes Rivera. There goes Rivera! Rivera for the first! 15 yards from Steve Rivera! Scrambling machine. I love it, Steve. I love it. First and goal. Time really not a factor in this game anymore. Not a huge factor anyway. 41 seconds, one timeout. Jamar Wallace is checked back in. We have the ability to audible. Read option. Wallace keeps it. Wallace down at the one. Hurry up for Jamar Wallace. 30 seconds to play. Got to be aware of that slot corner creeping up. But read option to the other side. If we can just get 60 to, to seal off the lane there, we have this. Here's the snap. Wallace shut down. Going to have to call our final timeout. Steve Rivera going to check back in. Third and goal. Throwing back in the end zone. Going to be well out. And it's fourth and goal. And here it is. The final play of the game for us. <laughs> if we're in, we win. If we don't get in, the game's over. Rivera in a quarterback. We got speed. They blitz. They blitz. Why did they blitz? Rivera walked into the end zone. Touchdown. Riverside takes the lead with five seconds to play. Oh my goodness. Riverside with an unbelievable play. And I'll tell you what here. We are going to go QB Neal on the two-point conversion attempt. We're up by one. They are not going to have time to get into field goal range. I do not want to risk a pick two or a, a, a blocked PAT or anything. We have a 25-24 lead. We're going to squib kick and we're going to play defense to win the game. This was a gritty, hard-fought game and Middle Tennessee State will have one shot to get into the end zone. Two seconds remain on the clock. That's it. Back all the way up, and hopefully we can force the ball out quickly. There's the lob. Well short of the end zone. Ball's incomplete. And the Riverside Royals have their first win of the season. Stay connected! Please. You're ruining the moment. It's an ESPN Classic game. The first in the return of the series. Unbelievable finish. There were a lot of moments in that game. I didn't know if we were going to win. Dan Sims, who got knocked out 12 for 13, over 100 yards passing. Pretty incredible. We haven't seen anything like that. We come back down from 14 plus to win 25-24. It might have even been 21 nothing at one point. It might have been 21 nothing. But we came back to win 25-24. If you stayed for the doubleheader, you got a good one. If you doubted us down 21, I can't blame you, I guess, but we showed you. We showed you what a game. It took everybody. We used four quarterbacks between Justin Watson, Steve Rivera, <laughs> Jamar Wallace, Dan Sims, and as a runner, Dan Sims, 12 attempts for 20 yards. Troy Jones had 57 Big touchdown for Dan Sims. Jamar Wallace goes 7 for 69. Unreal. Nice. <laughs> Unreal. Anthony Holmes, 4 for 10. And then with the quarterbacks, Rivera, 3 for 28 and a touchdown to win the game. Justin Watson, 2 for 14 and a touchdown. And then Tyler Ashley, the fullback. One attempt, one yard, one touchdown. As far as our receivers, it's just the running back, Troy Jones, really. Nine catches for 95 yards, and our defense stepped up. Chris Hood had a phenomenal game. Brett Johnson had a good episode overall. A couple tackles for loss in this one. What a game. What a win. And we got our first one. What a game. Wow, Cal Stomps, number 24, UCLA. 21 points in the fourth quarter. I cannot believe we won that. That is an unbelievable win. And we got, we got one on the road, no less. That was the game to win, though. All right, got to re-record the outro. I don't know why the audio goes so quiet here. You can see the peaks. Bizarre. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.